So welcome to my channel. If you're new, I'm David Fredrickson, 51 year old type one diabetic, ex personal trainer. I've done it all from cat, from CrossFit to calisthenics to bodybuilding. And I have tried, tested everything and I keep what works. One mistake a lot of people do in home workouts is they try to do every workout, every exercise under the sun to build whether their biceps, their chest or their back, which is overkill. You only need three exercises at most to build the biceps, small muscle, triceps, chest, anything. And the main thing is being consistent within those exercises to build lean muscle. And I'm going to share with you today the three foundation exercises that I designed and put together to start three workouts I set up where I do through the week, five days a week. And uh, bottom, basically, these are actually the starting exercises that target multiple muscle groups. And then off of each exercise, I stacked three other exercises to well round my physique. So basically what I'm trying to do, and this video is for anybody who's trying to build rounder shoulders, a V back, bigger triceps, more formed biceps, brachialis, making your arm look bigger, um, and core, which is super important. So it's basically a physique designed workout. And I've been waiting to share this with you guys. It just takes a lot of time to put these videos together and lighting for me has been hard. I bought a new camera and unfortunately I'm sending it back because it doesn't do any better than my GoPro here. So we'll get into this in a second, but one thing I want to talk about for those that are doing home workouts and aren't having progress. And I want you to make sure that whatever you're doing, you understand the whole idea about hypertrophy. And it's going to be real quick. I'm not going to try to use big terminology or anything, try to keep it real simple. So there is myofibril hypertrophy, where in the muscle itself, we have myosin and actin. So every time you take your muscle and you start to flex it, there's literally, there's myosin and actin that sit just away from each other within the muscle, all down the muscle fiber. And the contraction is when the, they grab each other and push each other like this through. So myofibril growth simply is basically those fibers, all the, all the myosin and actin basically growing through that progressive overload or the stress on the muscle through the contraction. And then you may have, um, cellular hypertrophy, okay? Uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which, which is basically the cells that surround the muscle enlarge. Now you need both of these in order to build a perfect, or a perfect, a good physique, because your physique can all depend on your genetics. So I'm pretty much, with the calories I consume right now, the size I am is pretty much my genetic ceiling. So where I'm gonna get, get bigger or look bigger is building muscles to make other muscles look more pronounced. So my workouts are designed with the idea. Um, it's almost bodybuilding is almost like an illusion. Um, it's, it's somewhat of smoke and mirrors because you know, I'm six foot, I think I'm weighing 205, 210. But there's guys that if you watch on YouTube that are five, five, and weigh 160 pounds that when you see them on camera, they look a whole lot bigger than me. <laughs> and basically the whole idea with building a physique, whether it's bodybuilding or whether it's just physique training where you want to just change your physique up is looking at your body and then saying, all right, in order for my arms to look bigger up in here and to get that little horseshoe showing there, I got to start concentrating on my rear delts or I got to concentrate on my, my, my mid delts or my front delts, or to make your arms look bigger. If your bicep is at its genetic limit, then you can make your bicep look bigger by attacking your triceps or actually attacking your brachialis, which a lot of people miss. So the brachialis is a muscle. I don't know if you see in the camera that sits right in there when I flex. 
and that allows the muscle to look bigger. So these workouts are designed not just for strength um, because they're, they're the three exercises that I designed are almost calisthenic based because I did calisthenics. I take, I've taken what's worked for me, whether it's in the gym, CrossFit, or calisthenics, or military style workouts, dragging your body for your lats, stuff like that. I've taken this and implemented it into the whole routine, but a lot of it is implemented in the three foundation exercises that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna try to get two different camera angles here, and I'll try to talk throughout the workout because before I do the full workouts, I would like you guys to really understand these particular movements because my growth and, and uh, the idea of, of what do you want to say, cutting or shredding to mold your body, there's specific way to perform these movements to get the most out of them through the whole idea of hypertrophy where you're dealing with progressive overload, you need to actually know how to activate in the eccentric and focus and the concentric. Okay. So these are basically bottom line, the push and the pull or the pull and the push of the movement activating certain muscle groups. And this is done by not whipping through the exercises. I see a lot of people on YouTube whipping through exercises, whether it's crunches, and just so you know, if you're trying to build any kind of muscle anywhere, you need to really focus on that contraction. And the contraction is just not this or, you know, this. It, the contraction, you start contracting from the bottom. This is a full on contraction. I'm talking full contractions. So it's very, very, very important for this. And I want you guys to get the most out of these exercises and the total workout if you guys want me to uh, post the workouts. And if you do want me to post the workouts, please leave a comment below. If you do try these exercises, leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions on it, leave a comment below. And don't forget to like this video. I'm going to jump into these workouts right now. And like I said, I'm going to try to get two different angles. I'm going to try to talk through this whole thing. And what I'm going to, what I'm planning on doing is actually the first movement of the, each three exercises, I'm going to break them down. And then I'm going to do maybe three or four reps of each one to actually show you guys. So you have a visual on basically what I'm doing. So let's get into this. So for these exercises, all you need, and you will need them, is a pair of sliders. These are the type of sliders I use. You can get furniture sliders. You can buy them at uh, Home Depot. They're just little round discs. The same. They look exactly the same. Something to put on your knees. If you have a wood floor and you're gonna do these, then you just use some towels and they'll be fine. I haven't found anything else that you can use on the carpet other than sliders, especially for this particular movement. Uh, tup, some guys say you can use Tupperware tops. I've tried different ones just to see and experiment to see if they can be used. And because of the pressure where the body's, the, you know, aligned to the floor and aligned on the sliders, you need something that actually can slide. So let's get into this. This is the first movement. I'm going to break this down. Like I said, I'm going to do one slow movement as far as go through it and kind of talk about it. And then I'll do a few regular movements as far as uh, the, uh, the exercise itself. And um, the, the, the amount of reps that I do in the circuit is anywhere between seven and 15 of these. And once you start doing them, you're gonna start noticing the burn in certain places, especially where strength is deficient. So the, uh, like the triceps or something like that. Like if your triceps aren't strong enough, your shoulders aren't strong enough, you're gonna feel the burn there. So this is great. I love this. This is why I wanted to share it, but I wanted to perfect it before I shared it. So let's get into it. And I want uh, everybody to give it a try and let me know how it does for you. So this first movement is basically a push-up progression type movement. And the way this works is you're gonna set up, you got your pressures on pressure on your knees, you're going to slide out here, your arms are straight, and you're going to come as forward as possible. So when you come forward and you pull your body forward, you're going to feel your chest engaging, especially the lower chest. And this is where a lot of guys actually have problems with the idea of building the lower chest. So it's going to work out for you if you want to build the lower half of your chest and also the um, girth of your chest. 
So hands are about a little, little outside of shoulder width. You're going to start to pull forward a little bit and you're going to come down like so, right up above the ground. You're going to take a deep breath, come out, elbows touch the ground, and then you're going to extend here and you're going to keep your core tight. That's what the breath is for. You want to stop and pause. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to pull yourself forward back to the second position there. <laughs> And then you're going to push up. And you, as you can tell, I'm forward a little bit. So I'm not like this. I'm forward a little bit. So it's really engaging these muscles. <clears throat> this is how it's performed. Hold yourself above. Roll out. There's a second pause. Boom. You want to pause on these parts here. On each one of these movements, there are pauses. If you start to do this, and you're trying to whip through it, you're not going to get the engagement you want as far as the progressive overload and the stress on the muscle. So I'm going to do a couple more of these. I'm going to do three of them. Get through this one here. And get on to the next one. So. makes a difference when you're talking through it got a little winded so that's the first one foundation exercises now keep in mind you can throw this into any routine at the beginning of any routine or the end and then the second one again that movement attacks the chest the lats it's like it like you're doing a pull-up really engages the lat I noticed 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 through all these three exercises over the last six months I looked at my back in the mirror with a shirt on and the V tapering on my back is way better than it was when I was uh, training in the gym. So let's get on to the next one. I'm losing my breath. You go here, try to get my finger position here to stay in the camera because these are wide movements. The second one is basically these are designed for pullover movements. So they attack the upper chest, the serratus, which is the lat here. The serratus muscles actually are those finger muscles right up in here. And you get those by pullovers, pull downs. And I never ever got g as good of activation and formation of my serratus in the gym doing pullovers, pull downs, as I have gotten from these next two movements. So the first one, they're pretty similar. The hand position is different. The first one is about a hand outside of shoulder width. So you're gonna be not where your push up was, a little bit further out. And again, you're going to, on this one here, it's a straight arm. You're still gonna pull forward. You're gonna feel that, that tension in your lower chest as you do this. And you're gonna keep your shoulders back and locked down on this one. Cause you don't, wanna, you don't want to, that to be loose in this type of a movement where you're gonna pull up or anything like that because you can damage your shoulder, uh, scapular th thoracic uh, areas there. So we're gonna, Locked and down. We're gonna come down. We're gonna squeeze the lower chest. So you're locking down, and you're gonna come down like this, almost like a sphinx push-up, but a wide one. You're gonna come out, roll on your elbows. You're gonna come out. You're gonna stop again here, and instead of a pull like this, you're gonna keep your arms straight with the shoulders locked, core engaged. Have a breath in, and then you're gonna pull back up like this. So here we go.
So there you go, very important to keep that core tight through the extension. And basically it's almost like a uh, hollow rock position. If you're familiar with hollow, rock, um, hollow rocks, you're not allowing your lower back to do this. You're keeping it up just a little bit by keeping that core tight in there. So we'll get on to the third one here. Now the third one is pretty much the same as that one, but what we're doing is we're attacking a pullover with an inner grip. So what you'll notice if you do this, you're gonna notice a lot more strain on the triceps. So this one here goes into a full on type Sphinx push-up. If you don't know what that is, I actually have that in the routines too because it is probably one of the best body weight tricep builders when it's done right. So on this one here, it's the same concept. You're going to, you're going to be in this position. You don't want like this. You want to be up like in all these movements. And as you come up, you want to tighten your core. When you go down, like I said, deep breath to keep that core tight. So you're going to come forward a little bit. You're going to feel your chest engage. Everything's tight. You're going to come down like in a Sphinx push-up. Bring your forehead to your hands pretty much. Boom. You're going to come out. Again, deep breath. Core tight. Pull up forward as far as you can. If you can go further, that's fine. You want to watch your wrists though. But you just want that engagement fully in your chest. So here we go. Boom. Really engage those lats as well. So there you have it. I hope I'm in the camera range. You can't see a pair of these. I mean, they're $15 probably on Amazon. But like I said, you can go down to Home Depot and you can get uh, furniture slides. Same darn thing for probably a whole lot cheaper. Other than that, I'm winded mainly because mainly I had a, a little bit of caffeine with no food because Today is actually my off day of training. And I'll talk about that on another video. I do a little IF, intermediate fasting, on my off days. The only thing I do consume is I consume EAAs, not BCAs. And we'll do that in another video. But I hope you guys enjoy this. Please give this a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Uh, to let me know if you want more um, uh, videos like this. Let me know. I'll post them. Once again, if you're new to this channel, my name is David Fredrickson. Thank you for watching.